she was a very special, very special person, very sweet person, very open person, very a person that that if she saw the good in you, she believed in you, she'll fight her way to get it out of you. Um, very smart, very intelligent, a very much of a fighter, and a loving, 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 very loving person. Um, when did she you... was somebody that was, I'm sorry. No, go right ahead. Go right ahead. She was somebody that was really like my best friend, you know, even the times that, you know, we went through, we went through, and even the times where we, you know, we broke up after our daughter passed away. You know, we, you know, our relationship never lasted, but our friendship and our bond was still there. You know, we still have that friendship still, and no matter what, she still loved me through everything. And I consider her as being a, a great best friend of me, and a great mother of my child, and a great person that, you know, that you can only come in a lifetime and meet. And she was a person that really changed my life a lot. I mean, to hear you say that, um, it shows that uh, you feel deeply about her. Tell me, when did you last see her? I last seen her Sunday. You know, um, from what I know, she was going to go to service. She was actually supposed to go to service. And, you know, we last talked Sunday. We were talking about just, you know, a lot of things that, you know, have happened in the past about our daughter. There's a lot of stuff that we're going through. You know, just trying to get back on track, you know, because we did lose a lot, you know, in the course of the past of a year now. And, you know, we'll have these conversations where, you know, we were just trying to keep both our heads up at the same time, trying to, you know, move ahead. So when I last seen her, it was Sunday. And then when I last talked to her on the phone, it was Monday. And that was Monday during the day? on the phone yeah it was like during and during like during the morning hour because i had my i had my phone turned off like sunday night and then when i woke up the next morning you know she had left me like a long text and that's when i had called her to see how she was doing and the response to what she was texting about and we talked for like probably like about 20 30 minutes and whatnot and then she was telling me that you know she wasn't kind of feeling too good and that she was going to call up work that day and so, and you last saw her on Sunday, or you had, you saw her the week before. When did you last see her? Sunday, oh. Sunday. Okay. How was she looking? How was she acting? I mean, she was okay. You know, she was normal Sunday. I mean, from what I know, she was going to go to service, and from what I was believe, what happened was she was supposed to go to service that day, but then she didn't have no gas, so she came to me some gas money and I put gas in the car and then she was supposed to go head back out to do that and then she was also supposed to go to her father's house to get more of her stuff because her dad well her parents were moving out the house that day so she was supposed to go down there to also get her stuff um that she had left at her dad's house to put in the car from what I know and so now tell me about your relationship um you guys met several years ago you had royalty and royalty passed yes. away in 2018, right? Yes. Okay. That and then, how long were you all a couple? We were a couple. It was it was back and forth. You know, it was off and on because we had our little difficulties and things that we were really going through. And I believe, like our relationship was probably like maybe like a year or two, and then we actually cut that off. Um, probably like after our daughter passed away because we realized that the relationship was not really healthy for us. It was like, you know, it was also like toxic. It wasn't the best for us, even going to the point of us grieving our daughter. We needed to be more friends than being in a relationship because it was so much stress that we were going through. And throughout us and the family and everything, we just wanted to stay friends and kind of try to go through this situation of losing a baby girl, you know? So that was our more so goal of trying to work things out the better way we could because the relationship was probably more stressful than anything. So we just tried to move a different way and try to be there for each other as friends and support and try to see if we can move past all that. So talk to me about um, when you found out that she passed away, um, that she was killed, because this is a homicide. Um, when did you find out and what are your thoughts? I found out that Thursday night, um, I believe it was my best friend my best friend called me and let me know that her cousin uh i mean excuse me, or her cousin told him and then i actually went down there and you know i was shocked and hurt and confused because i mean i was looking for her 
through probably since like that Tuesday. You know, I was calling up family members. I was calling her job. I was calling, trying to figure out certain things because it was just not like her. Certain people were saying that she probably needed some space because she was posting on Facebook saying that, you know, she needed space or whatnot. But something was just not right to me because of the fact that she never, you know, does not call a job. She always called a job when she didn't want to go to work or anything. For not for her not to call her job by like, the second day, then Wednesday, it was something that was not right. So when I found out, I didn't expect it to be like that, even though, like, I knew something was not right because I know how she moves and I know what she does. But just hearing that and having that phone call, you know, it just brought back the memory of when I had got a call from my daughter. You know, that was the only thing that was close to my daughter. And even though we didn't have a relationship together and we were not together, she was still something that was still close to me, that reminded me of my baby girl, you know. And just to have that gone, it really just, it killed my, my vibe. It killed everything from me. Just, it took everything out of my body and just so, like, I just I just wanted to break down. So you didn't find out until Thursday when you got a phone call from a friend? Later that day, later that day, because I was going back and forth. I was posting with the landlord early that day to see if we can get in the house because I didn't have the keys in the house. So I was trying to keep contact with the landlord because I couldn't get in. He was supposed to get the key to figure out if we can get in or not because I guess from what the aunts was telling me, they were telling me basically that the cops had came. I believe it was a Wednesday night. The cops came to see if they can bust out and down the door open, but they couldn't because of the way the door was fractured on the wall. So that's when the landlord had to figure out if we can call the maintenance people at the time and see if they can drill the door or they had an extra key to get in. So at that course, I was going back and forth trying to figure out if they had the key. That same, I believe that same day, that Thursday, early that Thursday, he would come by at 12, 12 o'clock to see if he can open the door. So when I came there, he still didn't have the key, so I'll give you a call and whatnot if I have it or not. So the course of the hours, you know, I'm waiting, 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 waiting. We're still trying to figure out, you know, what was going on, where she's at still. She's over here. She's over here. Because we kept getting this communication from one of us telling me. They were saying that um, they had calls in places at the hospital, and they were saying that she had checked in, which was never true because when I had calls at this hospital, she was never checked in. Who said that you she know? had checked so in? A, who, who said she had checked the in? the hospital. But who said she had checked um, in? It was, um, it was Auntie, her, her aunt Jeanette that was, I was talking to, and she was basically telling me that they have heard that she checked into the hospital the day before. So when I went to go look at it and when I went to go call, it was never, you know, her checking into no hospital or anything. And then her sister actually called multiple hospitals to see if she did, and it was never the case. So I had talked to her, called her back, and said it was never true that she never checked in. Right. So, so it was just a lot of miscommunication, a lot of mix up, a lot of things that were going on, of course, that week, or that period of weekend, and that same day on Thursday. So we're still waiting, you know, waiting, waiting, waiting. And that's why I called him back to see if he can, you know, open the door and he was saying that I don't know right now because, you know, he was trying to figure out about if he did check it in the hospital or not because he was getting miscommunications too. So he said the next day it was going to be Friday, you know, once once he's done his meeting at the counseling meeting, whatever it was, who he's going to come back and get... Who, you're, talk, you're talking about the landlord? Yes. Okay, who was the landlord? Um, I don't really know his name like that. Oh, okay. I just I, I, I do have his number though, but okay. I just don't know his name. Um, but I was in contact with him, and then that same Thursday, where he was basically, my hat called him back, he was saying that he didn't know if she did check in or not, so he had, like, the maintenance guy go. So he said the next day, once he go, once, once he's done his meeting at the, the, I believe, the council meeting or whatever it was, he was going to come back, bring him back, my, my, maintenance guy back, and then go from there. Right. So then hours passed that same day on Thursday. Um, that's when I got the call from my best friend that they actually, I guess, had the key and got in, and that's when he found her. And her family was, um, I think her mom was there or something? I believe so. I'm not really for sure because, I mean, when I had came out there, I know her step, her step, me, her dad was there, her stepmom was there. Mm -hmm. I know her family had to be there because when I heard what was there, when he opened the door, I believe her aunt was there and her mom was there. I do believe it was just her real mom was there. But so, I believe the time I came there, they already left to go to the station to um, get interviewed. Um, by homicide. So, and I noticed that you had posted, you know, people like to point the blame here, there, and everywhere. What do you have to say to people who want to point the blame at you? To me, honestly, I get it because, you know, me and her had past history 
of, you know, physical altercation, which is, you know, not a secret, you know. And, you know, we had that going on for a while back then, even the course of us, you know, with the baby was concerned. But then we had to kind of draw to that because it was not good for the both of us, especially for me, you know, like I could have been in jail, you know, even back then because what I was doing, I'm not going to point the fingers and say, oh, I'm not wrong. But there's a lot of things that were going on in relationship that people don't really know. They only know certain things because of what she might have said and what I had said. But only me and her really know what we were trying to do. But in the course of back then, there was you no know, physical applications with us and whatnot. You know, but after all that, you know, we separated. You know, I was doing my thing. She was doing her thing. It was still kind of hard on both of us because we're trying to be there for each other. But at the same time, we're trying to respect each other's friendship, you know, because we knew the relationship was not, you know, healthy. But I do understand, you know, because sometimes when it comes to a point where when you do have that sort of situation of, you know, for physical education with one another, it's going to be like a point of fingers. And I get that. I respect that. I'm, I'm not mad. I'm just stressed, stressed out because of the fact that that's not somebody I already would do that to. You know, not not saying to anybody, but that was somebody that was only close to my child. But I get the fact that people are going to point the fingers and say this and say that. And only the truth will come out and only the truth will, you know, basically come out to light, basically, you know, and that's what I want to happen. And not because to prove a point to everybody else or to prove a point to anything, but just decide to give her justice that she deserves because she needs that justice and it will make me feel a lot better for her to get that then declare my name. Because me doesn't really matter. She can't speak for herself. She's gone. She can't say nothing. So it's like it doesn't matter about me or anybody else. It's about her getting what she deserves, her justice to what she needs right now. That's what's more important. But I understand what the family's going to say, and I have to respect how they feel on the situation right now. Who do you think would do this to her? Honestly, you know, I can't say who. I don't know. You know, I don't. It's hard for me to even say that right now because, I mean, who would, I don't believe anybody would hurt her, you know, because she's a great person. Even me being close to her, she's a great, wonderful person. She's a great woman. She's a great, you know, she has so many flaws and mistakes she has done. But to her, her like that, it's a whole different ballgame, you know. So I don't know. I don't want to know myself, you know. And at this point, you know, I'm talking to detectives right now about situation. They're trying to still figure out certain things. And it's hard to kind of figure out what and how, you know. But all I know is, is that I hope when this does come out, it just proves, you know, that, you know, whoever did this pays for what they've done because a person like her does not deserve it at all. And you want to cooperate you know, with police, right? You want to co- I, I already have. You know, that's the thing that was so stressful to me because people weren't saying stuff, but it's like the same day when I found out, when I went down and they took me downtown, they fingerprint me, they um, they talked to me. I was there for like three hours, you know, and I'm willing to crop away. I was already there that, that same day. And, you know, they took my information down. They took my fingerprints down. They basically went through a lot of stuff. They already know the case that me and her had, you know, back then. It's just a lot that people are going to say because of the fact of our past history. And I get that. I have to respect people's opinion because I do have my opinion because they're the, these are the same people who was talking about my baby mother when she was alive, you know. And it's a, it's a lot that people will say, but just it's, it's, it's Internet and it's people going to say what they're going to say. You know, they're going to either be negative about it or positive about it. And at this occasion, there's a lot of negative going on, and I get that, but it's like they're doing too much, you know, because if it was not if it was really has nothing to do with me, it has nothing to do with what I was doing, then, you know, I would have probably been locked up by now. They would have been took me down or would have kept me if that was the case. And tell- or I would not be in, in the city right now if it was like that. And if you don't mind, um, just explain to me, yes, I reached out to see if you wanted to talk based on some of your Facebook posts, but you agreed to do this um, phone interview. Explain why you want to speak and you wanted to get this message out. Because, you know, she, this person that I was with and this person that I was really friends with and close to, you know, I, I really, I don't hide a lot. You know, people kept saying I was hiding or doing this, but that's not the case because, like, I, I'm not going to hide. You know, I'm not going to be you know, sneak. I might have my mistakes in my life, mistakes in my life, but I'm going to say what I'm going to say because she will want me to say something. And not in a negative way or not saying, oh, this and the third or being negative or being this, but try to speak up for myself because at the end of the day, you know, I was close to her. 
And she loved me more than anybody. Like she believed in me when other people never believed in me before. And that's just, again, a fact. Like she stood by my, by my side through so many things I have done, you know, and that's just a fact, you know, and I have to prove to myself and prove to her that I'm thankful for what she has done for me because what she done for me has changed me a lot through the course of news of my daughter, through my situations with my family, and through other things that I was going through personally. So me speaking out was just showing her that I'm thankful. And I might, I feel bad also because I wish I would have spent more time with her that she wanted me to. She wanted to be around me more. She wanted to work out the relationship with me more, but I just chose, I had chose not to. And because of that, I just felt so bad because I wish I did spend more time with her and gave her that. But, you know, it's just sad how things have to happen like this to make you to realize, like, man, I wish I was there for her a lot more than I should have, you know. And I just, I'm thankful that she really changed, but at the same time, I wish she was still here because I want her to see my progress within myself. I mean, I'm a new person. I'm a changed person. Right. And nobody has said exactly how she died, but the fact that, She's no longer here, um, and you just wonder who could do something like that. Um, and you will continue to cooperate with police, right? Yes, I posted to see them tomorrow. Actually, they had called me yesterday and whatnot. They, they want to take another statement down and try to get more information and whatnot. So I've been very cooperative. I, like I said, the same day that, that I found out, they took me downtown. And, you know, there's a lot of things they're trying to still figure out themselves because like you know they didn't even know she had a sister they didn't even know she had this so it's like there's a lot that they don't even know yet so it's just a lot of you know communication and trying to figure out the whole situation right now you know and um, that's where we're at right now from from what I know so as we wrap this up are there any final words you want to say um and what do you say to her family to her friends and to the community who is watching this and the fact that um, there are so many people reading the story and they're just dumbfounded and sad to see a 25-year-old young woman, a college graduate, a working woman, a young woman who lost her child last year, and now she is no longer here. What do you say to those people? The only thing I can say, because it's hard for me to even say for myself, is that, you know, one thing I learned from her when I, when my, you know, my daughter passed away, you know, um, she always told me to live through my daughter, you know, to keep pushing forward. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be something. But she always used to tell me, don't make an excuse to keep pushing yourself, you know. Don't ever give up because something has tried to happen because she will want you to move forward. So all that I can say right now is just try to cope and try to, you know, take it day by day because the only thing you can do is not going to change anything. It's not going to change the way how anybody feels is the point of just trying to figure out how can I move forward and how can I try to deal with this every day? Because like, no, when I had went through with me and her and our daughter, that was the most toughest thing that we ever went through together. Did you, you know, now that I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I interrupted you. Go ahead. Um, just dealing with that together and then now I had to do this by myself knowing that she's gone is like it's different for me because she was there to help my strength up a little better you know when our child was going now that she's gone it's like I'm just empty inside right now you know but so, it's just a sad situation it's very stressful it's very depressing it's very a lot right now and the only thing you can do is just try to find something to keep your mind going before going crazy you know and so when you had, you all had not been in any arguments, right, up until this time? No, we we tried to, even myself, you know, like this is what I try to explain to people and as far as like when we do have a discussion, we have a disagreement, you know, I learned from my past experience to just, that's why when I was saying that when she had called me the next day or texted me the next Monday because, you know, I'll turn my phone off. We have a disagreement about something. I learned to leave it alone and turn my phone off. And even me knowing that right now, I kind of regret turning my phone off at the time because I wish I would have spoke to her sooner, you know. But, you know, at that point, me learning my experience with her and learning how we can get to each other, it's like, you know, I learned to, you know, turn my phone off or learn, to, you know, speak at a certain time where we're not agreeing to certain things, you know. And people are not going to understand it, but you can only show proof and facts. And at that time, you know, I do have that on my phone with us, you know, having time where we just turn talking and, I would block her. I would say, you know, I can't speak to you right now, or I'll block her number. You know, it's, it's just 
it was me learning to do different things instead of just coming in and tr- try to argue or fight because it wasn't healthy for us. You know, it's still the fact that we lost our child, so it's, it's a lot of stress and then dealing with that and dealing with more. So I had to learn to stay away from her and give her space sometimes. What she didn't like me to do that, but we had to do that because of how me and her can get sometimes. Right. And then when you all spoke on Sunday, that was just a generic conversation. Was there anything specific that you all were planning to do or on Sunday when you all no, spoke? No, it wasn't really no, it wasn't really nothing planned that we were gonna do. It was the site that she was supposed to, like I said before, just go meet she was supposed to go to Sarah from what I know she was supposed to do and then she was supposed to go to her you know, her dad's and whatnot to get her stuff and then later that day we did have a discussion about, you know, um prior things that was going on with me and her and whatnot and she just wants to, you know she was just still trying to fight for a relation with us, you know, and that's why I felt so bad right now because I would ignore it and I would not speak to her about it and I would leave her alone. And because it is happening right now, I just regret leaving her alone because she only wanted to do what she wanted to talk to me. She wanted to make the relationship work and I just didn't and I would try to stay away from her and not talk to her the time when she would bring this conversation up and I just didn't want to speak to her and then at this point when it happened it's like damn I wish I did talk to her about this I really wish I did speak to her I really wish I did do this you know but it's like you know when things are gone it's like now it's too late and now you're the one looking stuck now and you wish you were there because you feel like you could have protected her from something happening I I, I really would you know, because she all she wanted, honestly, and if people don't want to believe me, it's 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 phone calls, it's text messages, it's voicemails, it's it's everything. She wanted to spend time with me more than anything. You know, and it's because I was the only person who was close to her child, and a lot of her family didn't want me to spend time with her, even myself, because I felt like it was just not good for us, and I felt like if I was still trying to be there close to her, it'll be leading her on. And I didn't want to lead her on. I wanted to be her friend. But at the same time, she feels the way she feels. I feel the way I might feel. And at the same time, you don't want to leave somebody where you're not trying to go that route with them. You know? And I just, at the same time, it's like, I might be doing a good thing, but at the same time, maybe I gave her too much space. If I would have knew a lot more what she was doing or who she was hanging around with, I would have known more. You know? And I just didn't know a lot more what she was doing because I was trying to give her that space that I thought might help her out, but apparently it didn't. Charles, thank you so much for um, doing this interview and talking to me. Um, is there anything else you want to add or anything else you feel like you need to say? I just want to just start. I just want to find the person that did this and make them pay for what they did. For That's all I want. And I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep or rest or anything until that gets done.